five o'clock on the Wednesday, and it's time for Craig and Ryan's Magic Review Show. I'm Craig. I'm Alan. Welcome back to another review show. This is the first review show that we've recorded since Blackpool, hasn't it? Yes. And we are looking at four tricks that we picked up at Blackpool that are now available to buy worldwide. I've got to be honest with you, if you look for the reviews where we're going to be negative about things, you're not really going to be finding it here. These are four really good items. There's some issues with some of them. There's some problems with some of them, and we'll address that as we get to it. But generally, as a rule, they're four really good tricks, aren't they? Yeah. So um, we're going to go straight into it. Uh, like I said, these are four tricks that we got from Blackpool, but they are available all over the world, and they're available to buy immediately. Let's have a look at the first trick, which is another trick by Michael Chatelaine. Okay, so before we start this first review, I have to point out that I'm in trouble with Ryland because uh, apparently I should have worn the merch. Is that what you said? <laughs> he said, he said, Dad, why are you not wearing the merch? We've got merch now. Why are you not wearing a merch? <laughs> but he, he can wear the merch for us today and I'll make sure I wear the merch next week. Um, so first of all, we are looking at Bottle by Michael Chatelaine. Now, Michael Chatelaine, we've, we've reviewed a lot of his stuff on this channel before. Most of it we're really positive about. There's been a couple of things that we didn't like. Um, this is exceptional like exceptional isn't it yeah. and um it's very different to your normal michael chatelaine trick because your normal michael chatelaine trick uses a gimmicked card in some way this is this is very different this is coin in bottle that's what we have here uh but not the traditional coin in bottle that uses a folding coin um this is an entirely different method and uh gentleman's magic who have created this along with michael They've done a really good job of the gimmick, haven't they? Yeah. Like a really good job of the gimmick. Um, what we're going to do, first of all, is we're going to get Ryland to perform this for you. I'm going to tell you right now, Ryland loves this. Ryland's got his own restaurant residency, don't you? Yeah. And, uh, and did you say to me, like, this is going straight into your restaurant act? Yes. Straight into his restaurant act. So let's talk, first of all, uh, let's do a full performance. Can you perform it for me? Yeah. We're going to do a full performance, first of all, and then we'll talk about what we think. I've got a glass bottle with a cork on, and I've got a coin. Okay. Now, um, yeah, it's a walking liberty. You can't push it through any sides. No. Nope. And if you if you put the cork on, you can't slip it through the top. No. So there's only one thing you can do. What? You gotta push it through the bottom of the glass. That is... Awesome. Okay, so that was the performance, and that was really good, right? Like, that was really, really good. And, I mean, well, you, you perform this. Tell me what you like about this. Um, I like the, do you like, well, there's no way you can push it through the sides. No. You can't push it through the bottom. No. That leaves there's only one way. You have to slap it. Poof, and it actually goes through. And it looks really good. And the way you did it, which is the way they explain on one one of the ways they explain on the tutorial, you're not even doing a false transfer, are you? You're literally just putting it here and you see it go you in. You can see. Yeah, you can see it. Boom, go straight in. It looks really, really good. Now, the the cork is gimmicked. That's that's partly how the trick works. The cork is gimmicked. However, you get an ungimmicked cork with it as well, don't you? So that if you're concerned that uh, somebody might suspect the cork. After you've done the trick, you can you can take the cork off, you can switch the cork with the shuttle pass or put it in your pocket and then take it out as they look at the coin in the bottle. In all honesty, I don't think that's needed because I don't think anybody would want to look at the cork. I think when you've done this, it's a really nice visual moment of magic. I think people will just look at that there yeah. and they'll just go... The visual you just go um, like this. Well, no, no, yeah, that's the weird Oh, that's, oh yeah, that, that is the gimmick cork. I didn't even know. Yeah. Um, so, exactly. So that's, that, I mean, it is what it is. It's one moment of magic. Now, what I was going to say, a couple of things on this. Now, the first thing is, um, this would make a great opener. Because part of the thing when you go to a table is to, is to get their attention and open with a bang. This is very, very different. It's not a card trick, although it is a coin trick. It's very different to anything I've seen before. I think this would make a really great opening routine. Yeah. Like coming out and just saying, hey, guys, I want to show you something with a bottle. I want to show you something with a coin. Check this out. Boom. You know, you can have a look at that. And then maybe you could take that coin and you could go into something else with the coin. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, you could then go into... Well, uh, and then you can make two and go... Um, then like split it into a third and then go 
Right, if I take two coins, I can make three. Oh, you're doing three fly. Yeah, yeah, you can go into three fly. Make two more coins appear and then do three fly. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the, 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 so positives on this. First of all, no table is required. Uh, you can, you can do it in someone's hand. You can do it in someone's hand. I did hand. it for his party yesterday. Yes, and uh, you just did it in your hand. You didn't even yeah. use a the table. There's no angle issues to be considered at all. In fact, once the cork, the gimmick corks on, and that's what's really nice about this, you can even show the bottle like this. It's completely angle proof. Yeah. Um, it's very easy to do. Now, Ryland's experienced with coins, but even if you had no experience with coins, you could easily do this. This is still a really easy thing to do. The reset is only a couple of seconds long. When you go away and you go to another table, you just have to reload the cork, which takes about 10 seconds, well, less than that, probably about five seconds, and you reset ready to go again. Um, yeah, I, I really like it. One thing I was thinking of is, and let me just uh, go under the table and uh, set the cork up so that nobody can see. There you go. Um, one thing I was thinking of is you could actually combine this um, with a couple of other sort of coin and glass moves. So, for example, and you and I haven't talked about this, but put that other cork over there. So what you could do is you can combine it with a couple of other coin moves and at the same time combine it with like a Albert Goshman salt shaker, coin and the salt shaker type routine. So you could show the bottle with the coin in it. You could take the, uh, the cork off. You could take the coin out. And you could say the idea is to get the coin through the uh, the bottle. If I just do this, I can push it right through the bottle. Now, maybe you missed that. I'll do it again. Look, I'll tell you what. I'm going to take the coin. I'm going to take the bottle. Watch. If I do this, one, two, three, I can put the coin in the bottle. I'll do it one more time. Look, if I take the coin and do this, I can... Oh, hang on. The coin's disappeared. Where's it gone? Um, oh, you know what it's done? It's gone underneath the lid. I'm so sorry about that. Watch the coin uh, over here. If I squeeze, it goes underneath the uh, the bottle. Of course, if I take this and I put this here and I do this, there's no way I can cheat. And yet, boom, look, it still goes into the bottle and you can examine everything. So you could kind of multi-phase it and do a couple of coin moves like that and coin and bottle and have like kind of more of a formal table piece if you wanted to. I don't know what you think about that. Um, Obviously, there's going to be more moves if you do that. What do you reckon? Yeah, it's like Cuban butter without a bag and without, like, it's going in and you can't take it out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. You can take it out, but you're squishing it in without um, yeah. the bag. Exactly. Um, so, yeah, I mean, there you go. Let's just put those in there. So, uh, I think this is better than a normal folded coin in bottle. I mean, obviously... Oh, one more thing that I should add is you can actually have this sign. So, how the sign thing works, just so you guys are aware of this is you have the coin loaded into the uh into the into the um uh what's this called whatever this cork. is cork thank you so you you might borrow a two pound coin for example so you do this i know you use walking liberties but if you were going to borrow a two pound coin you'd sign both sides of the two pound coin and you'd load that into the uh into the cork and then you'd borrow a two pound coin and you'd sign one side they'd sign the other side and then you'd do the uh you do the penetration so like this, and then when you tip it out, they see your signature, and then you can switch it and show that it's their signature as well. So it can be a sign coin into the uh, into the bottle as well, which I thought was quite nice. Um, yeah, I mean, I, like I say, I think this is better than the standard coin in bottle. Um, I really do. Uh, I've always struggled with folding coins, to be honest, and the fact that the top is cork makes it even better. And I know, I know another type of Cuban bottle, um, coin in bottle. Coin in bottle. Where you put um like an elastic sort of thing on top of the bottle, use an elastic band, put it on, and then go. You show the coin that's in there, and then you just go with the dental rubber dam. You learned yeah. that as a kid, didn't you? Yeah. What you could do actually with that is, if you wanted to, and it might be overkill, but you could stretch the dental. You could have that set up to do that dental rubber dam trick, and yeah. you could say, "Look, I'm going to make that coin go through the bottle," and go, "Well, let me get rid of the the dam," and then you could use the cork. So there's ways of routining it. Um. I really like this. I'm and gonna... then you could do it your version where you do it like that and then you just... Oh, JW. Do... JW grip. Yeah, that, yeah. That, that, if anybody wants to play around with that, uh, that's just uh, something I published years ago. It's just JW grip. So you do a retention pass. And if you hot... The bottle is the perfect size for this. Uh, if you're holding the coin in C palm or JW grip, you can hold the bottle perfectly. Your hand looks completely empty. But obviously it's been, uh, it's been held out directly above the the glass so when you do this it, it looks like it goes in so you know something for people to play around with as well 
But yeah, I'm going to give this uh, 100%. I think this is really good. What are you giving it? I'm giving this 119%. It, I want you, this to be trick or week. You want this to be trick or week. I know you said this is going to go straight into your act, didn't you? Yeah. Um, so there you go. Yeah, 119% from Ryland. I agree. This is trick of the week. 119% from Ryland. 100% from me. It's absolutely exceptional. You can get it from Gentleman's Magic. Let's move on with the next trick. So next up, we have Nicholas Lawrence's uh, Vanishing Card by the guys of P3 by Penguin Magic. And you and I watched Eric Tate and Nick Lacopo perform this at Blackpool yeah. over and over again. And we were blown away, weren't we? Yeah. Like, it was on the screens. I think it was like but one Eric, of the top tricks on their Yeah, side. but Eric was doing it like live as well, wasn't he? It was just like... Yeah. And, and I watched it and I was like... Because I'd heard about this before I saw it at the... Um, uh, before I saw Eric do it live. Well, I and, <laughs> and you hadn't heard of it, but I had. And I thought this is going to be so angly and so impractical. And this is just going to be social media magic. But it's not. It's actually really practical, isn't it? I mean, yeah. you have to watch your angles a little bit. But it is really practical. And uh, I'm going to do a performance in a second. I've been practicing it for a few days. I'm not 100% there yet. This is something that's going to take a bit of practice. For sure, this is something that's going to take a bit of practice. I'm not 100% there yet. But I'm like 85% of the way there. I'm happy with how it's looking. Um, and, and it is just a really clean vanish of a playing card. Now, in fact, I've got thoughts about this. And we'll talk about it. But before we do, shall I do a quick performance? Yeah. Okay, I'll do a very quick performance to camera just so you can see what the vanish looks like. Right now, I'm going to show you something with uh, with a playing card. Okay? okay. This is going to be incredible. Watch this. Are you ready to see the most amazing illusion of all time? Yes. This is unbelievable. Watch the card, and you will see that card completely vanish right there. So that is Vanishing Card, and that's basically what it is. It is a slow motion vanish of a card at the fingertips. Now, when I was over in America with the guys at Penguin, I was speaking to Nick about this, Nick Lacopo, and he actually said that he's planning on putting this into his stage show because there's a moment in his stage show where he's going to vanish a card, and he said this is such a clean vanish of a card. Um, he was talking about putting it on a pull, though, so he was talking about having the card on a pull. So he shows it, he does this, he gets the vanish, and then the card gets pulled away and his hands are just completely empty straight away. Because the one thing that you need to be aware of when you're doing this is obviously it's not really vanishing. There's no such thing as real magic. So when you're in this position, it's, it's compressed into a much smaller unit, but it's still being hidden in the hands. Now, the deceptive part of this is you see the card there and it looks like it should be here and it's not. Um, so, so how um, Nicholas Lawrence um, teaches doing it is doing a uh, doing a, uh, a transfer as he shows it in this hand and then putting it down, um, which which is fine and that's the way I performed it to you and that would absolutely work. Um, but you've got in the package you also have a little piece of black so you can actually use black art if you want to. Um, but there's lots of other ways that you could do it as well. If you're sitting down, you could lap it for sure and that would look really good. I was speaking to Nick Pulper. Uh, who is a fantastic magician um, that works with Penguin P3. And he has this beautiful handling where he does it up here and he takes it into like a back thumb palm and he shows his hands empty straight away, which looks really good. Um, but I think that the, the main handling, just this, as long as you're confident with the changeover, I think that that's fine. What do you think? I don't yeah. think that's a problem at all. It's not that angly either, because obviously if people are looking at it from behind, if you're holding it here, your body is blocking. And this side is blocked by your arm. So it's really just the left side. So as long as you angle this over to the people on the left, it's going to look pretty good. Uh, do you know what I mean? If you angle it over to the people on the left and the people straight, you kind of go this angle, that's absolutely fine. Um, I mean, Nicholas's tutorial on this is just 15 minutes long. And he says... Uh, he says, you know, come up with your own routine for this. This is basically just a vanishing card. Uh, and he's right. You know, there's so much you could do with this. Imagine having an invisible deck loaded, ready to produce. And imagine saying, look, I've got a playing card here. Watch, I'm going to make this playing card disappear. Boom, it's gone. Uh, can you take that invisible card? What card is it? Seven of diamonds. Great. I want you to put it in an invisible box and throw me the invisible box. And when you do, you produce the deck. And then you spread through and it's the seven of diamonds that's face down. I mean, how good would that be? I mean, that would be incredible, right? Um, how I think I'm going to use it is I do a, a multiple selection routine where I have 10 people pick cards and I find all 10 of the cards. And one thing that I always do is halfway through, and this is a David Penn idea, halfway through, 
I point to somebody and I go, boom, 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 this is your card. And they go, I didn't even pick a card. And I do a, uh, I, I do a rubber dub bug vanish onto the table and I go, oh, don't worry about it, I haven't even got a card. And it's a really nice moment. I plan on having this in my top pocket and go, your card right there, sir. Your card's in my top pocket. What was the name of your card? You didn't have a card? Oh, no problem, watch. Boom. And then immediately I can pick up the deck and carry on with the multiple selection. And it's one moment of magic. People haven't got time to kind of go, oh, but it's just part of a longer routine. Does that make sense? Yeah. I'm talking all the time here in this one, aren't I? I'm not giving you a chance to talk. It's because of how excited... I do that sometimes when I get really excited about a trick. I don't let Rylan talk. I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, uh, one more thing I'd like to add. You know, Eric, I was speaking to Eric Tate. Yeah. And he said, I mean, Eric's a genius, right? And Eric had the idea of having a blue-backed card behind the vanishing card so that as he rubs... It turns blue at the fingertips. How good's that? And then there would be no heat on the other card, on the other hand, because the card looks like it's just changed. Then you hand it out with the dirty hand. Um, okay, so I've waxed lyrical about this for a while. Tell them what you think. I think this is very good. Would you do this? Uh, I would probably would. Yeah. Do you reckon you'd be able to pull it off with your hands, hand size? I reckon you could. Maybe. I reckon you could. I reckon you could. Should we try? Yeah. Should we try and get it on Instagram for you? Maybe in the next week or two. Um, would you do it? Yeah. Okay. Any negatives that you can think of? I, I mean, obviously, the only that for social media, this is perfect. Uh, you're going to have to practice it to get it right in the real world. Uh, I do like Nick's idea of using a pull, um, but it is something that's going to require practice. I suppose that's the biggest negative, but it is fun practicing. You know, I'm there just going, ooh, 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 and it looks really good. The hardest part I found is not looking, is looking here when you should be looking here, and I can't help myself to look up here. So the hardest part is looking here before you do it, when you do the vanish. But, you know, it's it's just something that's going to come with time. I'm going to give this 95%. I think this is really good. What are you mm, giving it? 97. 97%. So it's another winner from Nicholas Lawrence. It's another winner from P3. I heard that uh, Penguin Magic and P3 have got some really good tricks coming out soon. From me. Are you going to give them a good review? Or are you going to be mean? Mm, both. <laughs> both. That's what I thought. <laughs> Let's move on with the next review. Okay, so next up we have Thin Air by, uh, oh my gosh, uh, Ignacio Lopez. Ignacio Lopez and Vanishing Ink. Um, Vanishing Ink are knocking them out of the park at the moment. They're doing a great job. I think the trick of the convention was Joshua Jay's Cylinder and Coin. I thought it was absolutely beautiful. Uh, did you watch Cylinder and Coin? Did you watch Josh do that? You missed it? Yeah. I bought it. I have it over there. Good. Shall we learn it together later? That's really good cylinder and coin. He makes a drink appear at the end. Like, out from nowhere. And can I drink it? It's got whiskey in it. Probably wouldn't want it. I'll let you drink it. <laughs> I'll drink it. Um, but yeah, they're, they're knocking out of the park. Now, I first saw this on the Vanishing Ink socials when they were doing Magic Fest. And I looked at this and I was like, damn, that looks good. That looks really good. And um, And then I saw it demoed. At Blackpool and watching it in the flesh, I was like, "My gosh, that looks even better than I uh, than I thought it would do." And so I bought it immediately. And this is really good, isn't it? There are limitations, and people need to be aware of the limitations. I've seen something like this before. I'm sure I have. Really? Yeah, you saw it on the Magic Fest video. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it was. You, we, you and I both saw it, and we were like, "Oh, yeah. oh wow, that's incredible!" Yeah. And then we saw it in Blackpool. Um, so there's limitations. I think it's fair to say there's limitations. However, as long as you're aware of those limitations, this is incredible. This is like a really good trick to do. So first of all, we're going to do the classic routine, which is a deck production, right? You're going to do that, aren't you? Yeah. So we're going to get Ryan to do the deck production just so you can see the sort of thing that it can do. And then we'll talk about, uh, about what we think. By the way, um, I actually pre-showed um, the trick to my dad before. For we actually did the filming. Yes, he did. He pre-showed me. He pre-showed me. Yeah. We don't want. So I forced him the as done. Yeah, we don't want people saying, "Hang on a second, Ryan can really read minds." How did he do that? Yeah, <laughs> Ryan pre-showed me. You say, "I'm going to pre-show you now, Dad." I'm like, "Okay." Um, what you just saw there was an, you did really good, man. That was really good. It's a it's a it's a debt production. Now that's the main routine on the on the project. However, there's lots of other stuff that they suggest you can do as well. Let's talk about the positives and the negatives to that main production. First of all, the handkerchief is very well made, isn't it? Yes. Like it is really well made. Um, and 
the production looks incredible. I love that moment at the beginning where you give it a little flick and you can see the ripples through the handkerchief and then you just do boom and it just appears. It looks really good. I mean, I love it. That particular routine needs to be set up on the table before you start, yeah. doesn't it? Like it needs to be set up on the table before you start. So it's, you can only really do it in... It's very limited. Well, it is so very limited. Let me let me explain a few places that you could do it. You, first parlor. of all, you could do it par perfect. You could do it in a parlour situation perfectly. It would make a great opening to your parlour show. You've got it all set up on the table. You open by making the deck of cards appear and then you go into a card routine. Parlour, it would be brilliant. Also, if you work behind a bar and you do bar magic and you've got in control of the bar situation and you can set something up before people come over, that would be fine. A bunker booth would also be fine. And uh, a place where I could really see this working is a trade show. If you work trade shows and you do like 10 minute shows every 15, 20 minutes or whatever, then this could be set up on the table and you could boom, produce. And, and for a trade show, it would be amazing because you can produce pretty much anything. So Ryland produced a deck of cards, but anything that will lie flat. So you could produce a load of coins. Um, so you could have coins all over the handkerchief and you could show the handkerchief, do the ripple thing, close it, open it. And there's just coins and money everywhere, which would be really good. So if you were working a trade show, let's say they're giving out like discount vouchers or something, you could make all of those discount vouchers appear. And you could say, hey, come over here, guys, who'd like a discount voucher for this? Boom, 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 and make them all appear. Or if there's a particular product that you're pitching, you could make that appear. So a trade show, I could see this working really, really well. However, for a walk around performer, for a restaurant performer, for somebody who's going from table to table this particular thing wouldn't work because you need to have it preset on the table before you begin would you agree with that yeah yeah um the other thing uh that, but there's other routines on there as well so the other routines that are on there um the main creator ignatius uh what was it pablo ignatius lopez has um various different things you can do with four aces so he's got this thing where uh, he, oh, he he brings out a handkerchief, puts it down on the table, opens it up, and inside there are four uh, there are four aces. And then one at a time, he covers them up. And as he uncovers them, one of the aces has disappeared. Then another ace. Then another ace. Then all four aces disappear. That's good because you can literally just have it folded up in your pocket. You can put it down on the table, unfold it, and you're into it. The only problem with that is at the end you're left with the vanish of the aces, and it looks very clean. But the aces are left inside the handkerchief. So if somebody went to pick up the handkerchief, they'd see them. Now, his way of dealing with this, which is a really good way of dealing with it, is as you pick up the handkerchief, you lap the aces or, you, you know, yeah. the aces are lapped, which is great. But then you need to consider that this needs to be doing done sitting down where you can control where people sit so that they don't spot the fact that you're lapping, if that kind of makes sense. So that's another issue to take into consideration. And most of the routines that are, are that are explained that use this handkerchief that don't require the handkerchief preset on the table are going to require lapping. Now, the Vanishing Ink team go through a set that they, they do another half an hour video after the main tutorial where they go through different bonus ideas. And there's some amazing bonus ideas on there. The standout one for me was a torn and restored card, which is really clean. They've got the handkerchief on the table. They have someone pick a card, uh, free choice of card. They have them sign them. Free? No. They have them sign the back of the card. You sign the front of the card. And uh, and then they say, they, they use the handkerchief to say the ink doesn't rub off, look. Um, and then you tear the card into four, you put the four pieces on there and you literally do this and it restores. And it looks incredible. And it's their signed card and they can pick it up immediately. The negative behind it is you either have to pick the handkerchief up and put it away in your pocket or you have to lap the pieces because you are left with the pieces inside the handkerchief. And that's the thing that you need to be aware of. Um, I mean, it's not a problem to pick. It looks so clean. It's not too much of a problem to have the card restore, give it out to them and then just pick up the handkerchief and put it away because the focus is on the card. It looks so clean. The focus isn't on the handkerchief. But you have to have a reason to have the handkerchief on the table. And what I mean by that is if you just put the handkerchief on the table for no reason 
And then you do this torn and restored card and then you pick the handkerchief up and put it away. I think that looks dodgy. So you have to have a reason to include the handkerchief. And with that torn and restored card, there's not really a particular reason. But maybe if you put the handkerchief down on the table and you used it from the classic version of Matrix, the coin assembly, um, where you have the four coins in the, uh, in the thing and you put the coins underneath the handkerchief and as you do, they go underneath the card. And you do that sort of thing. So you've got a reason for the handkerchief and then you go into the torn and restored card. I think that would be fine. Yeah. But as it stands, it's a great trick. It's really well made. But there's going to be very few places that I can perform it. You, What did you say to me about it? You said you love this, but you're not going to perform it, didn't you? Yeah. Why? Um, um, I like it, but I'm not going to perform it because you've got to set it up usually and you've got to usually set it up because you've got to like put it on the table um like how many places do you perform where you can set it up on the table or you can lap cards into your lap i don't think of any i can't think of any way you perform where that would happen neither so i mean that's a problem um and as for but uh, you are going to do it on your social media aren't you yeah you are planning on doing it on yeah. your social media because it, it's an amazing social media trick i mean when i first saw it on social media i was blown away it does work in the real world but you need to think about the justification of the handkerchief and you need to also think about um the performing environment and whether you can set things up beforehand or whether you're able to lap or um you know how you're going to justify the handkerchief what are you giving it i'm going to give it 79%. Seven, because you're not going to do it. Yeah. I get that. I might do it because there are places where I perform, like trade shows, where I think this would work really well. So I'm going to give this 85%. I think it's really strong. I think it's another well-made product by Vanishing Ink. And I think that uh, it's, it's well thought out and it's very clearly uh, explained. It's, it's just a really good product. But there are limitations and you need to be aware of the limitations if you're going to buy it. 79% from him and 85% from me. And the last trick we have is Pocket Friends Cups and Balls by Daniel Dorian Don Johnson. Daniel Dorian Johnson. <laughs> you kind of got there. You kind of got there in the end. Yeah. We um, this guy's got a green beard, which is kind of cool. <laughs> a green beard's cool, are they? Yeah. Yes, he has got a green beard. We I met saw him, this guy at Blackpool. We met him at Blackpool, didn't yeah. we? It was really nice, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, and this is being produced by Magic Box, which is one of your favourite magic shops. They sawed you in half last time you were up there. Uh, we love the guys at Magic Box, don't we? Yeah. And um, Magic Box and Dorian Johnson have put together pocket-friendly cups and balls. Man, this thing is awesome. I love packet tricks. This is one of the coolest packet tricks I have ever seen. What do you think? Yeah. You haven't learned this yet, but you've watched me perform it and you really want to learn it, don't you? Because Ryland's, one of Ryland's favourite tricks is cups and balls. He loves cups and balls, don't you? Yeah. So, like, being able to do cups and balls, but just, like, put the cards in your pocket is just so cool. Um, I'm going to do a performance of this so everyone can see exactly what it looks like. So I'll do a performance and then we'll talk about what we think, okay? Yeah. Let's do it. Okay, Ryan, I'm gonna, uh, I know that you're a big fan of the Cups and Balls. You do the Amar version and the Vernon version and Tommy Wonder version. Uh, I'm going to uh, show you a pocket-sized version of the Cups and Balls. <laughs> now, you know that every single magician, when they do a Cups and Balls, they need a, uh, a magic wand. This you is a magic do. wand. Yeah. Well, yeah, but I'm going to give you the magic wand. Yeah. And these are, these are the cups. Now, uh, there's three cups. That's cup number one. That's cup number two. That's cup number three. Three cups. And each cup has a ball. Okay? So this cup here... Uh, this has ball number one underneath it. And this cup here, this has uh, a ball underneath it. That's ball number two. And this cup here, this has a ball underneath it as well. That's ball number three. Now we're going to make the balls disappear. Are you ready? Yeah. Watch. We'll start with this ball here. Just wave the wand over it. Say the magic words, abracadabra. Abracadabra. And when you do, that first ball vanishes completely without leaving a trace. How good is that? That's good. It's good, right? Should we do it again? Yeah. Should we do it again? Yeah. Should we do it again? We'll do it again. Watch. This next one here, just wave the wand over. Say the magic words, abracadabra. Abracadabra. And when you do, that ball vanishes completely as well. That's ball number two. That one's gone. That leaves us uh, with this one right here, which is ball number three. Yeah. So you know what you need to do? You just need to wave the wand over, say the magic words, abracadabra. Hocus pocus. Oh, hocus pocus. We're varying it up. <laughs> well, let's see if it still worked. Yes, it did. That ball disappeared as well. Now, obviously, you know the cups and balls as well as me. What happens when the balls disappear? Well, they appear somewhere else, don't they? Yeah. If I snap my fingers, do you know where they go? Where? They go on the wand. Have a look. Look on the other side. There's the balls. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. 
But that's not the big finish. The big finish is, you know as well as me, there's always a big finish to the cups and balls, isn't there? Yeah. You normally have big things appear underneath. In fact, you do. Look, underneath this cup over here, we now have a tennis ball. Underneath this cup over here, we now have a tennis ball. And underneath this cup over here, we now have a tennis ball. We now have one, two, three tennis balls underneath the cups. How cool is that? Cool. Cool, right? But you know what? We're going to take one of these tennis balls. And we won't worry about the other two. We'll put the other two away. The only important thing is this one. Do you know why? Why? Because I'm going to turn imagination into reality and snap my fingers. And we'll make that tennis ball 100% real. And you can examine everything. So that's the routine. I will say I changed it slightly at the end uh, just to fit my own performing style. At the end, Dorian does uh, a frustration count when he shows the three lemons. I do a diminishing uh, false count. Do a, three lemons? Yeah, yeah uh, sorry, three, uh, three tennis balls. I do a diminishing count. Um, that, that's the only difference. Um, and, and it's very easy to do. It's just basically... Yeah. Yeah, it's just because you use lemons. <laughs> because you actually use I lemons. I actually use lemons when I'm doing my cups and balls, yeah. yeah. Although, what's really nice about this is, first of all, the car, you get the little tennis ball, which is really Yeah, cool. I actually use stuff like this. It's like a bouncy ball that's actually um, about in, as green as this. In in your cups and balls routine, don't you? Oh, you do actually get a lemon. That's what I was going to say. So, if you, you get a lemon and you get a potato and you get a, uh, a tennis ball. So if you wanted to make the lemon appear, if you wanted to, like Prop Dog, have got those real lemons that I use that look like uh, real lemons, but yeah, they're fake yeah. lemons. So if you wanted to make a lemon appear... I don't know where we're going to get a potato from. Uh, Prop Dog, they do fake potatoes. Um, if, if in doubt, go to Prop Dog. No. Uh, well, yeah, they do everything, no. don't they? If in doubt, go to Prop Dog. Um, so, uh, no, I think it's magic what to do with bananas, isn't it? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Um, but first of all, the cards are made out of plastic. So they're really nicely made. If water spills on them, if you're working in a bar or whatever, they're going to be as good as new. Um, so that it just it, cleans them up, really. Yeah, it just cleans them up. You get everything that you need inside the set. It's not a difficult routine to do. It's just a series of double lifts. And because you're using um, three cards, you can use a push-off double, which is a lot easier to do than uh, you know than getting a break. You know, that card or looks like it's floating. It it's holding one. That one's probably balanced on his elbow and that one's floating. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but it's another trick. It's a bonus trick that didn't get included. Um, uh, Daniel Dorian Johnson is a fantastic explainer of magic. He is a fantastic um, sort of uh, teacher. He goes through everything with a fine tooth comb. It's not a long tutorial. It doesn't need to be a long tutorial. He goes through the setup. He goes through the history of the trick. Uh, he goes through the moves that you need. And he then goes why through I'm the tutorial. You're giving it 95%. You're giving it 95%. Yeah. I'm giving this 100%, dude. I love this trick. Like, I no, really... I'm going to give this 97. 90... 98. It keeps going up. <laughs> it keeps going up. It started at 95, then 96, then 97. Uh, can we get it up to 99%? Ninety nine percent saw the kid magician. Um hundred percent from me. Oh it's up to hundred. <laughs> Boom. Hundred buddies. There you go. And people think that our rating system is a joke. <laughs> um one hundred percent from me, one hundred percent from Ryan, and this is sick. This is a really Absolutely. great packet trick i love packet tricks anyway yeah. but it's it's you know you can immediately create a hook it's not like a normal packet trick hey. i think this is in like one of the top 20 packet tricks now yeah I mean, it's it's amazing when i do my next you know best packet trick videos of all time this is 100 percent going into there <laughs> yeah. because this is so cool unless so 20 other really good ones come out yeah right um but yeah, I'm going to give this uh, 100%. He's going to give it 100%. If you, you, you watch the performance. If you like what you saw, it is not that difficult to do. It is full of magical moments. Looks First hard. of all, the book... Huh? It looks hard. It's not that hard at all. <laughs> it's just a few double lifts. Yeah. You're going to learn it, and you're going to do it on your Instagram this week. Yes, you are. Trust me. You can do it, no problem. Uh, it's just a series of double lifts. and But you think about the magical moments. First of all, the balls disappear. Then the balls land in the hand of the spectator. They've been holding the wand all the time and the, the, the balls appear there. Then you end up with the lemons. Then the balls disappear. Then you end up with the lemons. And oh my gosh, it's four, just amazing. Four, six, four, four. And then you've got the production of the, uh, the lemon at the end. Now I changed the production of the lemon at the end as well slightly, just so you know. Uh, Dorian just drops it from the packet. I like the idea of putting two of the cards away and just doing the production of one. Uh, lemon and then showing that it's not on the card anymore. But it's, if it's, you got two of the little tennis balls, you could just go. You could, you could. I mean, there's so many different options with this, which is as, why. As long as you got a big enough hand to hold 
Yeah, exactly. Which is why it's so good. So there you go. It is 100% for me, 100% for the Kid Magician. I'm going to do this immediately. He is going to do it. <laughs> check, check, it, check out your socials. He'll have it down within a few days. And uh, yeah, there you go. Like I said, four great tricks this week. And they were all really good tricks. Right, let's wrap this up. It's a review show in the back. <laughs> That's a review show in the back. That's a review show in the back. With a big stinky Ryland. That's right, another review show in the back. Oh. <laughs> guys that is another review show in the back thank you very much for joining us again this week we really appreciate you joining us and, uh, and and checking out our reviews it means the world to us don't forget to leave a comment down below if you want to see more videos like this you know what you're going to do like the video subscribe to the channel and also make sure that you follow him on Instagram you are on almost 500 Instagram followers my man I've already gone past it have you? <laughs> They're the, the rising faster than me. And uh, your YouTube channel is kicking off as well. You are doing your thing and you're doing a great job. So please do me a favor. Um, you know, if you if you get time, follow him on Instagram, follow him on YouTube. He would mean the world to him. And also don't forget to subscribe to me uh, right here on Magic TV. I'm going to be back again tomorrow with three videos. I'm going to be here with a video at two o'clock, a video at six o'clock, a video at nine o'clock. Um, and me and Ryland will be back next Wednesday with another review show. So we'll see you again. Thanks very much for watching. I'm Craig. I'm Ryland. See you again. Take care. Bye, everyone. Bye.